to your right and to your left and say neighbor you're welcome I just say before the Lord Amen our God is wonderful he will do wonderful things with you today in the name of Jesus Christ every issue of the believer's life must be addressed from a standpoint there is a standpoint where the believer must address his life. And that standpoint of the believer is a place of victory. It's a place of victory. That means that a believer who, who needs something, who needs something from God, who needs breakthrough, who needs healing, who needs money, is not addressing his issue from a place of defeat. He's not seeing himself as a defeated, but as a victorious person. The mindset with which you address an issue determines the end product. It will affect the end product. Because the time that you lose with a wrong mindset, you can't gain it back. The Bible said, God has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness according to his power. He has given us all things. So now the believer lacks a thing. He is not to address his issue from the place of lack, but from a place of provision. That this thing, I may not have it, but it is what? Provided. God is ministering to you this morning. Everything you need to move forward, it shall be granted to you today in Jesus' name. Living in peace. Somebody say living in peace is a choice. Peace is spiritual. It is spiritual. My peace I give to you, not as the word give it. So the word has a way of giving peace. And God has a way of giving peace. My peace I give to you, not as the word give it. The world has something to offer that they call peace. He said, but he has his own. The peace of God comes from within. It is not affected by anything that is happening around you. It is not determined by events. It is a state. It is a state in the spirit. It is a state that you arrive in a walk with God. 
a state in the spirit that you arrive in a walk with God. When you discover that state, you must maintain that state. When you discover that state, because, because it is a state, you discover it. And when you have discovered and arrived in that state, you maintain it. Why? Because the adversary is always going to do everything to bring you out of peace. There is a possibility of arriving in the peace of God. And there's a possibility of being moved out of it. It is a realm in the spirit. It is a place in the spirit. In Exodus chapter 14 and verse 14, it said, The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall what? Hold your peace. The Lord shall fight for you. So, the peace that God gives is not in the absence of battle. Is somebody here? It's not in the absence of what? The peace of God is evident even in the midst of battles, in the midst of challenges, in the midst of seemingly controversial and inorderly events of life, situations of life. He said, the Lord shall fight for you and you shall do what? Hold. So when the Lord is fighting, it is your responsibility to hold. Somebody say hold. The peace that the world offers tells you that everything must be at equilibrium. That everything must be on balance. Nothing must be shaking. So the world, is peace is guaranteed as long as the vehicle is moving and there is no pothole. Is somebody here? As long as there is no what? Pothole. His peace is guaranteed when the vehicle is moving and the liter of fuel is on 100 liters full tank there, there is peace but immediately the tank start going halfway immediately the tank start running quarter way the peace that the world guarantees will start fading so it is determined by sight hindsight and negative sights the lord shall fight and ye shall hold your peace listen when you are in the midst of battles, when you are in the midst of challenges of life, and there is no peace in you, it shows how much of God is in you. How shall men know that God is involved in your life? It is the peace that you demonstrate. It is the peace that you exhibit in the midst of storm. When the world was hit by coronavirus, there were men of God that were panicking like children. In fact, they, there were those who panicked more than their, their, they panicked more than their members. And there were those who stood bold as a lion. They were too filled with God. They understood that this one is nothing. This is just a fear mongering demon. Many used their altar to converse for coronavirus. <laughs> Many even wanted to offer the government their the church auditorium for treatment. See, your neighbor says, Peace is what you must hold. It's what you must hold when the Lord is fighting your battle. That's wisdom that we have in God is very vital in the journey of life. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of peace. When the Bible said, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, make your request known with prayer and supplications. Giving thanks always with prayer and supplication. This can only be done when you align with the Holy Ghost. When you align with the Holy Spirit, it takes you out of anxiety. It takes you out of me, myself, and I. It takes you out of self-consciousness. And takes you into a realm where it is about its purpose, its plans. And when it begins to execute these things through you, the peace that you are going to see, you can't even describe it. Peace is what you must hold. Whatever you want to exchange for it is not worth it. There are those who can exchange their peace for five minutes of wandering, of thoughts. Battles of life does not destroy the peace of those who understand the act of God in the event of life. There is always an act of God in the event of life that comes to you. In every event of life that comes to you, there is an act of God. There are those who will be able to see the crossing of the Red Sea as a baptism into power. Meanwhile, some will see the crossing of the Red Sea as destruction or God has forgotten. Some will be able to see the, the crossing of the Red Sea as what? A baptism into power. 
that these challenges is actually taking me into the depth of God. Somebody say the depth of God. Yeah. Meanwhile, some are seeing it as a destruction or a swallowing up. I told you, I was speaking here on Tuesday. I said the spirit of money. The spirit of money. I was say the presence of money the presence of money will come along with certain temptations that you have never experienced in your life. And some of them will stick with you as long as that money stick with you. Meanwhile, the absence of money will also create certain temptation which will not leave you until money comes. So either the presence of money or the absence of it, there's a challenge that comes along with it. But the wisdom with which you deal with the event is what matters. There are those who are able to see the burning furnace as an opportunity for purification. Meanwhile, some will see the burning furnace as God has forgotten me. They said unto, to, to Nebuchadnezzar, the Lord God that we serve is able to deliver us. And even if not, even if he does not, we will not bow to you. The burning furnace became a purification for them. Meanwhile, some will see a burning furnace situation as a destruction as a weakness of God in their life tell your neighbor say God is not weak battles are baptism into mantles battles are baptism into mantles the only challenge is that many believers waste it many believers do what? waste it there are many seasons that have been wasted because we don't understand the act of God in the event of life there is no temptation that is that is permitted to swallow you. There's no temptation that is permitted to destroy you. There's no temptation that is permitted to consume you. Battles are baptism into mantles. That is why you must understand that in God, no battle is expected to seize your peace. Jesus was in the midst of storm. In the midst of what? Storm. And sleeping. In the midst of storm and what sleeping it takes being full of god to sleep that kind of sleep in the midst of storm but sleeping in the midst of storm but sleeping and the ones that are awake the ones that were what awake they could not silence the storm the one that was asleep rose up and silenced the storm the implication of this is those things that you face, it is not the strength that you apply to your challenges that matter. It is the wisdom and the power of God in you that matters. It is the wisdom and the power of God that you apply that matters. It is not just the strength that will create peace. There are issues you can be confrontational about and you will end up having more trouble confronting that issue. And there are issues that you'll be silent about. And when I say confrontation, I mean be physical about it. There are issues you, you can be physical about and no result. Tell anybody, say, don't exchange your peace for anything. You must understand that peace comes at a cost. Peace comes at what? There is a cost for peace. It is not cheap. There is an offering for peace. When you see a man who is not moved, he has paid a price. When you see a man who is not what? Moved. He has paid what? A price. There is a price for not being moved in God. The Bible said, those that put their trust in the Lord, they shall be as what? Monzion. We shall not be moved. Why are they like Mosiah? Because they have put their trust in God. So they have become rocky. They have become fab. They have become cemented. They are not moved. There is a price not to be moved. There is a price not to be moved. The ultimate aim of the devil is to move you at every instance. He wants the news to move you. He wants the next call you want to receive now to move you. He wants your child situation to move you. He wants your jar of oil in the house that you carry this morning. And you saw that it has gone bottom way. 
He wants it to move you. He wants your alert, your alert to move you. There is a price not to be moved. There is an offering for peace. To arrive in that state with God, there is a price for it. It's not cheap. It's not a talk. It's a walk. It's not what? It's not a talk. It is a walk with God that guarantees that state. The trust of some people is in their strength. They are working business. They are special knowledge. This is fed with time. They fed with what? Time. There is a price for peace. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 2, it's a grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace. So as much as we know that grace comes from God, peace comes from God, it cannot be given. No man has it. The peace of another man cannot give you peace. <laughs> you need to secure your peace. Tell the say, secure your peace. You, you need to secure your own peace. You need to ferment it. You need to secure your peace. It is a security that only you and you alone can secure your peace. The way we are now, as we are in a building, everybody can be, everybody is shining. But the rest, the state of rest that we have is the result of the realm we have walked into with God. Amen? There is the realm that we have walked with God. Every other thing that you put your mind on or you put your trust in, there is only one day. Somebody say only one day. There's only one day that that thing will disappoint. Only one day. I was, I, I was somewhere and the, the doctor was telling a woman, the husband had died. Now, this man happened to be a group man, marketing manager in Shell. The, the wife, do you know what she said? How much? Doctor, how much can you bring him? <laughs> you know, the woman was confused. As in, okay, now at that point, it's what? How much? Like, is there something they can do to, to just buy him back? So it was not about the money. Now, the volume of that is because of where she has put her trust. It's in where she has put her trust in money. Whatever it costs. How much? Is it money, doctor? Is it money? Whatever a man put his trust in, it only takes one day to be disappointed. The peace between man and God is a product of sacrifice. It's a product of sacrifice. The peace between man and God today is a product of the sacrifice of the blood of Jesus. The fundamental peace that we have come to enjoy as believers today is as a product of the blood of his Christ that was shed. So your peace in life is going to be a product of sacrifices that you pay in working with God's will, working with God's instructions, working with God's guideline. No matter who you are in this world, if you don't work with the principle of God, you will be found out by the devil. You will be found out by the devil. What are the conditions for God's peace? The prerequisites of God's peace. The prerequisite for God's peace. One, wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. Wisdom. To maintain your peace, you must walk in wisdom. You must walk in wisdom. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, he said, Behold, I send you as sheep among wolves. As what? Sheep among wolves. Be ye therefore wise as what? Serpent. And harmless as what? Do. So your strength is not physical. Your strength is not physical. Your wisdom is a spiritual wisdom. I send you as sheep among wolves. Be therefore wise as serpent, gentle as those. For you to survive with a man and not lose your peace with men, you must have peace. You must have wisdom. 
it is a battle between kingdoms it's a battle between what kingdoms so there are those that are dispensable available disposable for kingdoms to express themselves just as you have made yourself available for god disposable for god the same way there are people who have made themselves available for the devil so the channels of their spirit is open for anger to pass through for malice to operate for wickedness to be exalted there is a spirit in man the bible said the inspiration of the almighty give him understanding so there are people that there is a spirit in them the imagination of their heart is evil and it gives them understanding on how to what execute evil so you need wisdom to live in peace with men is somebody here miracles are worthless without peace is somebody here miracles are what worthless without peace when you live a life without peace and you obtain a miracle you have wasted time that you can't recover so before your miracle you must be in peace it comes at the cost the cost of the wisdom of god the bible said by strength shall no man prevail there is a wisdom that god will give you that your adversary cannot gain say there's a wisdom that he can place on your tongue that he can place on your life that your adversary cannot gain say so that when this wisdom is on you your adversaries they will be there and they will not be able to destroy they will not be able to attack they will not be able to stop what god has started in you he said and i will give you a mouth and a wisdom that your adversary cannot gain say what is the mouth what is the wisdom it is in the holy ghost somebody said in the holy ghost the wisdom and the mouth that god has given you is in the holy ghost why because your adversary need to understand you first before they are able to gain say you so can you gain say the man that you don't understand you can't gain say him you can't quiet him you can't counter his words the channel with which you, you is communicating with god is not the same as theirs we have a superior advantage in god a superior advantage in god that every disadvantage you seemingly seem to be passing through now is ultimately going to turn to an advantage if you walk in what is provided already don't be too wise just be foolish enough to follow that which is written you can't pray away every battle you can't escape all challenges some battles you break through tell your neighbor say some battles you break through there are battles you walk through somebody said walk through the bible said even though i walk through the valley of the shadows of death so there are battles you walk through there are battles that you overcome you overcome some battles yet there are battles there are battles you conquer these terminologies are sweet to the ear break through walk through conquer overcome however none of them is without a fight is somebody here none of them is without what so if you understand the terminology it is not in the sweetness to the ear it is in the deep understanding of what you are saying to break through there was a fight he said by god i ran through a troop by my god i have run through what a troop so there is a battle to run through there's a battle to walk through there's a battle to break through there's a battle to overcome and all these is not without a fight but ultimately he said the lord shall fight for you and you shall what you shall what hold your peace what is the prerequisite for god's peace you must be steadfast minded somebody say steadfast steadfast you must be steadfast unwavering mind a mind that stays on god is a steadfast mind a mind that never have an option outside god there are those who have option of if i want to build house this year i have to steal in my office you are not steadfast <laughs> If I want to pay house rent, I must snatch another person's husband. You are not steadfast. If I want to have money for rent, I must lie. You are not steadfast. A young man was here some years ago. And I called him. 
I said, you are too desperate in life. You are too desperate. And I was talking to him. And after like three minutes, I don't know how many of you were here. He shown me. He said, Pastor. He said, I've listened to men of God who are bigger than you. What do you want to tell me? He started mentioning big, big churches he has gone to. <laughs> he said, what do you want to preach to me that I've not heard before? He said, if I would have made it, I would have made it under them. Then I asked him a question. How old are you? He was less than 25. He was what? Less than what? 25 years. Less than 25 years and as desperate as a demon. I laughed. I said, if people who are 50, 60, still they are steadfast in God that my end, my expectation shall not be cut short. Then, you are how many years? And you are I, told, I told him, I said, you are consumed already. Because whatever option you give to that young man is going to take it. And I, I, from the way and the contents, only divine intervention will make him not to take a satanic option at that point. And this is the state of many children of God today. They have lost their peace concerning their, any pursuit in life. This can be as a result of the workings of the devil. He has been able to re-engineer the, the eyes of their mind to veer off possibilities in God, then focus on impossibilities. And as a result, they have lost their peace. So whatever option you present to those ones, they take it. They grab it with their two hands. Your mind must be stayed on God. The steadfastness of your mind. Now, this is elaborate and we have to speak about it. The steadfastness of a man's mind is not only trusting in God, but also working with God. Working with God. A steadfast mind sees possibilities in God alone. He has lost track of any order. He has lost track He's not keeping an option behind the scene. A young lady was here some years back. And due to the root, where she came from, there was a lot of deep marine involvement in the family. You know these demonic and foundational things? It confuses people. I must let you know that there is nobody that does not have his own. Amen? Be you Pope, Bishop, you came from somewhere. Now, you must have peace, even with your foundation. Is somebody here? If you don't have peace, and apply the word of God in faith. You will keep undulating like a war clock. The battles that you fight in these challenges must be done from a standpoint of victory on the cross. Not from a standpoint of the battle itself because he said it is finished. So fighting from the point of victory is different from fighting from the point of battle. This young lady... There was, in fact, every word I gave her I was like a was like a scissors, a razor sharp scissors. I told her the week her grandmother would die. There's that week the grandmother would die because I saw the woman trying to use a new baby for rituals, so as to extend her life. I gave her many divine instructions. Many of them came to pass. But one day I was in my office. She came to me and said, "Pastor, I want to go to the village." <laughs> and I said, "What for?" She said, I just want to go to the village. As she was leaving, I said, no, come back, sit down. I said, you're not going to the village. They have prepared a husband for you in the village. And they said, you should come. He said, yes, pastor, it's true. Let me, I just want to go and see. I laughed. I said, the person that prepared your husband for you, do you know he's serving an idol? I said, it's true. It's my twin. It's my twin. It's my twin. I said, if you go, all the prayer we have prayed, all the fasting you have fasted, you have what? You have destroyed it. But because they will give you according to their kind. Tell your neighbor, say, if you have option, God will look from afar. You must have no option outside God and yet hold on to peace. Look, the cost of our salvation is at different expenses. Even Jesus has paid the price, but there's a price you are consciously paying without knowing. Some people will marry and that marriage will cost you your soul. Is somebody here? Marriage will do what? Cost them their soul just because they married outside God's provision. A young lady several years ago, I told her, I said, I'm not seeing God in this marriage. He said, the guy loves me. He has a good job. He has this. He's carrying his that. I said, no. 
this God is not in this. I said, but I'm seeing that God is going to show you a sign. He said, okay, sir. After some time, she came back and she said, there's something odd that happened. I said, what is it? He said, they went for blood check. The young man was AC and she was AS. That was the first time I was even hearing about AC. I said, AC. I said, there's nothing like that. She said, no, there's something like that. Then I said, okay. I think that should be the sign God is telling you. She said, ah, they went for a counsel from a doctor and the doctor told them that there's a way to go about it. <laughs> I shook my head. Then I began to tell her, I began to recount a few number of people I've told, don't go there, that went there. And after some, we'll stay five years, some, six years. Some, I will have lost contact. They will now tell me, oh, pastor, as me, I knew. I wonder, that was what cut her off from me. That was what cut her off. Four years later, four years, I saw a message on my phone. It said, as me, I knew I would have... I will have listened to you. Then I did as if I don't remember her because I still have a contact. I said, who is this? Oh, pastor, you have deleted my number. I said, in four years, you have not said hi. In four years, you have not said hello. How important do you think you should be that you should be in my contact? So, oh, pastor, you have my number and you don't want to answer me. Madam, what is it? He said, we are going to court next week. We are going for divorce. Tell your neighbor, say be steadfast. steadfast. Steadfastness means a mind that is stayed on God. A mind that is what? Stayed on God. A mind that reflects on God. That thinks on God. That broods on God. It broods on the possibilities that are available in God. Not the short corners, the shortcuts. The available options. In Isaiah 26 and verse 9, he said, with my soul, have I desired thee in the night? Yea, with my spirit within me, will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. With my heart, I brood on thee daily. A mind that is stayed on God, it broods on God, is just like a mind that is charging in God. When that kind of mind comes out, it faces the world with a renewed vigor, a renewed focus. A mind of righteousness. A mind of power. God said, the Bible said, that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and what? Sound mind. The soundness of your mind is relative to the quality of time you spend steadfastly brooding on God. Steadfastly brooding on God. The same Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. It said, thou will keep in, thou will keep in, in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. So to trust in him, you must brood. In verse 9, he said, with my soul, have I desired it in the night? How many times have, I, have you stayed awake in the night? Not just to pray for your enemy to die. Those kind of things. When cockroach increase in your compound, that's when you know how to pray. When rats, or when there's no food, you can do vigil. How many times do you stay to brood on the power of God? Basking in the peace of the Holy Ghost. These are what ushers us into possibilities in God. Steadfast. Steadfast mind. A steadfast mind stays on God. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, he said, hope, 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 make it not ashamed. Hope, make it not ashamed. So for you to have faith, you must have hope first. So hope is the mother of faith. Hope make it not a shame. But the, for the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. We dwell it in us. So there is no one who is brooding on God who will not do so by the Spirit of God. By the Holy Spirit of God. It is not a wasting time. It is a building time. It's a building up your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Jude one twenty. It's not a wasting time. It's a brooding time. It's a building time. Where you have that supernatural strength coming from, you wouldn't know. Where you have the courage to face your future without even asking questions that will make you go astray, you wouldn't know. And where you will have the power to be able to, there is a power to do, there is a power to get, there is a power to keep. Where this power will come, you wouldn't know because you got it from the spirit. You were strengthened with strength by the spirit in your inner man. Tell nobody to be steadfast. 
in First Corinthians fifteen fifty eight, he said, "Be steadfast, be movable, always abounding in the faith. Be steadfast, be immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord." The prerequisite for peace in God. The prerequisite for peace in God. Steadfastness. What does this steadfastness guarantee? It takes you into love. Tell your neighbor, it takes you into love. Now, when you stay in the love of God, there is a situation, you, there is a state you arrive in God where God himself now owes you a responsibility. He now owes you what? A responsibility that nothing moves you. It is now God's only God's responsibility to make sure that you are not moved. So that situations that are going to move you, they become taken care of. They become what? Taken care of. That's why the Bible said, your heavenly father knoweth that which you need even before you what? That is the state. It's a spiritual walk and a state where you arrive, where God himself, now he knows those things that you need before you ask. There are those who will be in the realm of ask, seek, find, it's another realm. There are those whose hearts don't need to stay on anything other than God. Because in their work with God, they've arrived in a place where their heavenly father knows what can remove them from peace. Move on me. Move on me. Holy Spirit, move on me. Move on me. Move on me. Holy Spirit, move on me. Move on me now. Move on me. Holy Spirit now, Holy Spirit now, Holy Spirit now, Holy Spirit now, move now now, Holy Spirit move on me, move on me now, move on me, 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 Holy Spirit move on me, Holy Spirit now, move on me, Holy Spirit now, move on me, Holy Spirit now, Holy Spirit now, move on me, restore me now, restore me, restore me, restore me, restore me now. Holy Spirit, restore me now. Restore me. Restore me now. Restore me. Restore me now. Restore me. Restore me now. Holy Spirit, restore me. Rain on me now. Rain on me. Rain on me. Rain on me. Rain on me now. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, rain on me. Rain on me now. Rain on me. Rain on me now. Rain on me. Rain on me now. Holy Spirit, rain on me. Rain on me. Rain on me. Rain on me now. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit rain on me. Rain on me now. Rain on me, rain on me now. Rain on me. Holy Spirit now. Holy Spirit, rain on me. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8, it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever is true, whatsoever are honest, whatsoever are just, whatsoever are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, it says, What? Think on these things. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things so your capacity to be steadfast on god is in your ability to think on these things don't address your life by your gloominess don't dictate your your future by your pulse don't examine your future by the economy except the god of abraham isaac and jacob is not the one you are serving what are the prerequisites for peace? The peace of God. You must be forgiven. You must be what? You must be forgiven and walk in forgiveness. You must be what? Forgiven and what? Walk in forgiveness. It's a choice. And the only choice you have as a believer. A choice and the only. Many know how to forgive people, but they don't know how to forgive themselves. Amen. There are things you have done against yourself. There are mistakes you have made with money. You must be forgiven. Forgiveness is a choice that you have to make. And it's a choice you don't have any other. If you must walk in peace with God and man, and even yourself, and next change of your status to forgive is what will disrupt your peace spiritually. There are those who have entered in a state where they don't forgive and they are okay with it. When you don't forgive and you are okay with it, you don't even have the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you the first work of the Holy Spirit. 
when you cannot forgive and you're a prayerful person you're a satanic person <laughs> because if you have the true holy spirit and you have not forgiven somebody you can't stay three minutes in prayer before he will tell you he will remind you it's his job he will bring to you your remembrance the things which he will tell you, oh brother i love you so much but this is your prayer is not he's not leaving this ceiling <laughs> he's not leaving this ceiling ah, you say, ah, why in fact there are times he will disrupt his presence so that you will see that he's not there then you say, well, ah, it's like the only space is not. He said, oh, I'm here, but forgive. Forgiveness is not equal to brainwashing. Is somebody here? It's not what? It's not being it's not being brainwashed about what happened. Forgiveness is a spiritual state that you arrive where you have no more feeling of revenge. You have no more feeling of hurt, even though you remember. Forgive and forget is not in the Bible. If it's in the Bible, show me. Amen? Forgive and forget is not where? Uh, it's not in the Bible. Forgive and don't be hot. Forgive and don't revenge. That's what is in the Bible. He said, if your brother sin against you, and if he repents and asks for forgiveness, you will forgive him. He said, even if it is 400 and what? 90 times a day. That is how long it takes the justice system of heaven to activate a judgment. It takes 490 years of the same offense for the justice system of heaven to what? Activate a judgment over one particular kind of sin. In the book of Leviticus, he told them that you will keep the Sabbath of years. After six years, you leave the land virgin for one year. But God himself left them and they continued to disobey for 490 years. And he came with judgment after 490 years. He said, for every year that you have sinned, I will send you to slavery. So, for every one out of those seven years, it became 70 years. That was why they went to 70 years of slavery in Babylon. So that is equal to the time that if you want to make heaven, you must forgive without limit. Is somebody here this morning? It is not, some, you don't have any choice. It can be hurting, it can be disturbing. It can hurt, it can destroy a lot of things, but there's no choice. It was beaten, battered, it was shamed. The king of glory was half naked. And yet he said, Father, forgive them. And he said, the word of God said, looking unto Jesus, not looking unto your pastor, that somebody hurt him yesterday and he came to poop it to come up, use half of the sermon time to tell you what somebody did to him. He said, looking unto Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him. So your eyes is off the error. Your eyes is off the fault. Your eyes is on the joy that is set before you. If you don't remove your eyes from the fault, if you don't remove your eyes from that which the enemy is doing, which another kingdom is trying to impress or permeate into you who belongs to another kingdom, you are going to miss the joy that is set before you. You must forgive. That which in your family, you have to forgive him. Because if he makes hellfire, if God takes you to hell, you will know that you don't even want witches to go to hell. Is somebody here? If you go to hell for five minutes, you will know you don't even want witches and wizards to go to hell. If you go to hell and see the man that killed your baby, you will pray that God should remove him from there. It's not a choice. And to have true peace in the Holy Ghost, you must forgive. What are the prerequisites for God's peace? How do we arrive in God's peace? It's a lot of contest. I passed my neighbor, Jen. Now it's not common again. Amen? I be still common. Okay, because we don't leave that level. Now, it's a world of contest. Only the generated people understand complementation. The world survived by competition. The world system exists by what? Competition. It's propelled by competition, not compliment. Who wants to compliment you? How many people compliment you for wearing? Some people now this morning, that if, they, if they look at the person they don't like and it's, look, it's shiny, they look at it like this. There are those who are expecting you to be worse. It's a competitive and wicked world. But for you as a regenerated one to have peace, there's what we call godliness and contentment. Somebody say godliness. godliness. And what? Contentment. What is godliness and contentment? Listen. The fact that you are godly and content does not mean you don't have a vision. Godliness and contentment does not mean you, do, you are not driven. Because when we emphasize this thing, people feel like, oh, you need to leave everything you are chasing. Don't be ambitious. Don't be industrious. No, that's not what we are saying. To be godly means to be God-centered. 
God being the nuclei of everything you are doing. To be God what? Centered. To be God centered. Every decision you are making is based on your relationship with God. That's godliness. Godliness and contentment. Without godliness, there's no contentment. You must be ready to imbibe that culture in you. The Bible says godliness and contentment is what? Great gain. You must be confident in your God-given ability. Confidence in your God-given ability. And not wishing for somebody else's ability. Wishing for somebody else's. The day you enter your neighbor's house and there's a new set of chairs, do you lose your peace? Then you remember that you have been using it for 15 years. Now, that is enough to change some people's prayer points. In fact, that is enough for some people to change church. Godliness and what? Contentment. Your decisions are driven by God. You are driven by God-centered mind. This is what brings contentment. You are not in a race with anybody. You are not going to buy a cloth that your salary is going to have a problem with. Because I don't understand. Why should you buy a cloth on credit when it's not food? No, what, why should you? Some of you now, the clothes you bought in December, you have not paid. See now. December, they are still pursuing some people here because of December clothes. This is March. Am I lying? That, that's not contentment. And you can't exist like that without losing your peace. You can't exist like that without losing your peace. You can't survive like that without losing your peace. There are prayers that will go unanswered because heaven does not respond emergency. Heaven doesn't respond emergency. The Holy Ghost is far ahead. He sees thousands of miles ahead. So there's nothing called emergency in the book of God. It is either it is settled in heaven or it is not. It is either what? It is settled or it is not. Godliness and contentment. You don't do things that will put you on us race with somebody. God's wisdom. Your junior sister Mary and call the old Nigeria to come and eat. Must you destroy another young man's life to, to call the whole state? Because your junior sister won't be big. Must your own be big? Does it determine the destiny of children that are coming to you? Godliness and contentment is missing. If men can just have God at the center of every decision they are making, there are many mistakes you won't make. There are many errors you won't commit. You must come to a state where you are satisfied with what God has given to you. There are those who want to make you see that you are worse off. You are not good enough. That's why things are not happening around you. You are not your God. They didn't make you. There are those who will ask you, since you have been praying, what has God done? They didn't make you. They are not your maker. There was a man at the gates of a rich man. He had sauce in his body and the Bible said dogs lick him. And yet he was a friend of God. He secured God. He had God. He died and went to heaven. Even though he did not walk in wisdom, that was why he could not operate in this physical realm in wealth. But there was a man who had all the wisdom of this world and operated in wealth and yet he did not have God. Godliness and contentment will take you out of race of this world. Endless pursuit, competition. You bought the same land the same time. Must you build at the same time? Do you know if it's told to build? I was passing by a beautiful house in a uh, along this uh, Yanoba area. And I was looking at the house over and over again. I was just talking about the house. I never knew that the person who were going to his house, the house was next to that building. Then I was just looking at the house. I said, ah, this house is very beautiful. What a house. The, the man looked at my face and he was driving back. He said, Pastor, the man that owned the house, 
the day he opened the house, that was the day they buried him there. And when we got closer to that compound, I saw that there was a fresh grave. A house you cannot look at once. That you have to look at the roof differently and look at, look at the color differently before looking at the architectural design. There is someone somewhere who is asking God why he has not given him two bedrooms. And somebody has, who has a house has been given six feet. Just six feet in his mansion. Godliness and contentment. It does not kill ambition. It does not kill vision. It does not destroy focus. But it agrees with what God has given. It agrees with what? What God has given. It is not a state of mind for the mediocres or the mediocrity. It does not make you a mediocrity. As much as we celebrate success in God, we must understand that success is not God. There is what we call godly success. Is that this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth? Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, thou shalt meditate on it day and night, that thou may be able to observe to do all that is written in it. Now, it didn't say some things, it said all. The mysteries of the kingdom, not mystery, mysteries, that you may be able to observe to do. God is wealth. The presence of God is wealth. God is healing. His name is Rapha. God is peace. His name is Shalom. God is provision. His name is El Shaddai. That you may be able to observe to do all. Then thou may have what? Good success. Rise up on your feet. This morning, God is restoring your peace Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. You are not in battle with anything. You are standing on a victory. If you don't know it, you need to know it now. You are operating from victory. Don't let the enemy tell you you are in a battle. We only win because he has won. We are confident of victory because he had victory. And the victory that Jesus secured, he secured it not because he was the son of God, but because he had the spirit of God. The Bible says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with what? The Holy Ghost and power. He obtained this victory by the Holy Ghost and power. God is helping us this morning. I mean, God is helping you especially this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Raise your right hand to heaven and say, Father, as I begin to pray, in the name of Jesus, Restore my peace. Restore my peace. By fire. By fire. Pray that prayer in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Now Amen. this service is in two phases. Amen. And um, we must be prepared for what we are about to do. I told you on Friday, I said, write the name of your, all your family members. And what do you want God to do for them? It's a family liberation service. So immediately I'm coming down from this altar, you do that. Praise God. And then we'll start our liberation service. So immediately I'm coming down from this altar, you do that. Praise God. Before I come in next. You are going to still pray this prayer. What the devil is doing is to cause fear. Is to what? Cause fear. The flower that grows on the field, the best of the air, are they better than you? And yet it does what? It takes care of them. I want to assure you again that God is going to take care of you. Irrespective of whatever this economy say, you know there is nothing that catches us unaware here. If you are actually attentive, it doesn't catch us unaware. There's virtually nothing that is happening now that I've not told you. Especially generally. Why I'm telling you this is God has made a way for you already. Amen. You can't serve God without peace. Say, Father. Father. Take me into the realm. Take me into the realm. Where peace, where peace, peace is secured. Is secured. Pray that prayer. Mazu Father, take me to the realm. Manakito Shakti Lianamos. 